ride or die. Baby, I done rolled and died, rolled and died, rolled and died, and get with it, I'm still single. At the end of the day, you can't keep no man that don't want to be kept, and ain't no need of you trying to stress yourself out, ain't no need of you trying to cry yourself out. You just get up, boss up, and go get another one. Welcome back. Today we're talking about what it means to be ride or die when we do whatever it takes, and I mean whatever, to make our relationships work. That was Bella Jones, <laughs> who after 10 years in what she describes as a toxic relationship, has finally walked away. And her videos on the topic have resonated with so many, raking up a total of 8 million views and counting. And Bella is not alone. Also joining us from Phoenix is Melanie Vestrate, who, after a string of toxic relationships and two divorces, posted this on Facebook, quote, I had a very low self-worth, so I would accept whatever they would give me. However, little that was, scraps, morsels, crumbs, I always settled. Lifestyle blogger Brianne Huntsman, who told me when it came to her family and friendships, she used to be the person who would drop everything to be there for others before realizing it was at the expense of herself. And Shanita, of course, who inspired this entire hour with her new book, Ride or Die, is still with us. Whoo, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eight million views and counting. Yes. And... People were watching that because they saw some of their life, I believe, yeah. truly. They were watching it over and over. Now, you made us laugh, but you also <laughs> made us reflect because of this. And you said that um, you could barely recognize yourself. You, be you went back to that point in that there were situations where you were just, you didn't know who you were. Absolutely. You could not recognize yourself in that relationship. Go further. Help me understand what that felt like for you. Uh, it was just toxic all the way around. Um... I lost sight of everything in that relationship, um, from fighting and just all types of things, just losing myself. At one point in time, I didn't even want to deal with my kids. Oh. Yeah, it was that bad. Because you felt like you needed to totally focus on this relationship. Absolutely, yes. We had to reach out to your ex, who said he thinks um, that you're confusing him with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> um, he did not specifically address any other allegations, but this is a, less about him for me and more about you. Take out his name, this person. It's what you felt needed to be done to make a relationship work, mm -hmm. that ride-or-die complex. Yes. Had you always been this way in other relationships, too? Yes, I've always been that way. I feel like it came from not having my dad around um, at a young age, but I always put more into every relationship than I've ever gotten. Wow. Melanie, um, I know you relate to losing yourself in a ride-or-die relationship. You've talked a little bit about it. Give me some examples in your own life where you saw this showing up. For me, like, long story short, like, I grew up without my father. Um, even though he's in my life now, so that's amazing. I had a revolving door of stepdads. I had six by the mm -hmm. time I was 21. And so I had a, a toxic, unhealthy relationship with pretty much everybody in my life. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was the example of abandoning herself over and over and over again. And then, you know, you, you pick this up as a child, right? Yeah. Because like our subconscious mind is wide open when we're little. That's what Shanita was saying about you see it and this is an example yeah. and it becomes generational. And so you were yeah. seeing it, it with your mother. Yes, and it's something that's that's really important is that this isn't logical. Like, like none of us think, oh yes, I just want to get into this horrible, toxic ride or die relationship and abandon myself over and over again. Mm. Like, no, no woman wants to go into any relationship like that. But, but for me, it was, who do I need to be to keep you? Because I'm afraid that you're going to leave. You hit on something that, and, and I'll admit, I think I was in my mid-30s when I started to worry and have that, like, wait a minute, I'm 30s, I'm never going to get married, I'm tired of... What I said to my friend one day, I said, I'm tired of failed relationships. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in this relationship where I was doing things that I didn't feel like myself. And then, this is a true story, my sister died. And he showed the least empathy of anyone that I oh, knew. Wow. And I remember he was at my home and I called him and I said, my friend is downstairs, you should come down and bring the keys. And I never saw him again. Never wow. saw him again. 
Um, you know, but I felt at that time, you know, what Brienne has talked about, you've said you, the savior complex. And I had the same thing. I felt like this person, A, I'm 35, I needed to not have another failed relationship because if I had to answer one more time why I wasn't married. And then I felt like he was someone I could save in a way. Mm -hmm. And you have had that same feeling. Oh, yeah, for sure. For me, it's been more like friendships and in family. Yeah. Um, dynamics and situations. And it's the same, whether yeah. it's a, a love interest or a yeah. family. They're taking, you're trying to save everyone. That's why we combine some of this ride or die, not just romantically, but just in life. Because if you do it with friends and family, you're probably gonna do it at some point with someone you're romantically involved in. Yeah, and it has just, and for me it was also really funny because I like sat down and I was like, okay, what am I, how am I contributing to this dynamic? Because it takes, as you talked about earlier, like it takes two or more people to have this happen to you. And what ended up happening is a lot of my friends, and I, as I sat down and had hard conversations with them, they were like, hey, you're not telling us how to show up for you. Like you're only showing up and giving and then you're leaving. Mm. And that was a big so moment you, for me. So your self-reflection was that that your friends actually wanted to do for yeah. them, but you were so busy trying to... Yeah, trying to save everyone. Yeah, for sure. What was that like when your friends turned the table and said, we don't want you to be ride or die. We're trying to <laughs> ride for you, yeah. but yeah. you're so busy doing everything for everyone else. What, what was that yeah. eye-opening moment like for you? Um, so I, this is kind of dramatic and I don't know, whatever. We're like just going to be We're real. daytime TV. Yeah, it's so dramatic it's in itself. <laughs> so I, I did what I call the life retreat in my backyard where I just like looked at my life goals and my friendships and really just tried to like think about what I wanted. And I just realized that I was participating in the dynamic and that I needed to show up differently. You needed to show up differently with yeah. friends. I wanna know how you did that. And coming up, another woman's gonna join our conversation, a teacher, a mom who found that she was ride or die for her students and everyone else. Her story, next. We're talking about life's ride or die relationships and how going above and beyond for others, no matter what the consequences, can be harmful. It can be toxic. Back with us are Bella, Melanie, who both say that they've compromised their own needs to hang on to toxic partners. And Brianne, who has been sharing how the ride or die mentality had derailed some of her friendships and relationships with family. Also back with us is the author of the new book, Ride or Die, Shanita Hubbard. And joining us is Dakia Worthy from Houston. She's a mom of three, a former high school teacher who found herself putting students, her children, her husband ahead of herself, leaving her burnt out and feeling inadequate. Dakia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, you said that the issues that you had with people pleasing and prioritizing others left you dealing with stress, anxiety, depression, um, even an eating disorder. I mean, when we talk about ride or die, like Shanita said, it's a hip hop song and it existed well before that, the lyrics. But the reality is women, we're killing ourselves sometimes mm -hmm. trying to live up to this standard. And it has seeped in with children I know you love, but they weren't even your own children. These were students. How were you, yeah. how were you, I guess, burning yourself out? What were you doing? Well, I mean, basically I would recognize a need in one of my students, whether that's, you know, showing up without lunch or the, the wrong attire for the weather. And I would address that need. They didn't have to ask me. And I guess news just traveled through the school and eventually I would show up early to go to work and they're sitting in front of my door. Miss, I just need to talk to you. This is what's going on in my life. Um, they would show up to eat lunch with me. They would need to stay after school because their mom couldn't come and get them and I'm grading anyway. So can I please sit in the room? But it was always emotionally draining because I just needed to be the love that they needed, the caregiver that they needed. And I was never checking in with me. Shania, how do we process that, though? Because, you know, the way Dakia told the story, some people might say, oh, my God, what a great teacher. She's so kind. Look at that. She's helping the kids. But it kept adding up. And that's a part of the shame, admitting it, right? Because no one wants to be seen as unkind or ungiving or my love comes with conditions. What did J-Lo say? My love doesn't cost a thing. Mine does. <laughs> some people want to. You know, sometimes that cost is our soul. Mm -hmm. So how do we distinguish between being kind and want to help to it getting into a bad area. The problem is that this is like culturally embedded into our society. I seriously doubt you can have a show centered around a ride or die trope and it'd be full of men. 
-hmm. right? It's just really embedded into our society that women just show up like for this in every capacity. So and you have work. So right. you at work. Right. So you at work friends. with friends and your relationships. At church, you just show up and give of yourself until there's nothing. And then we even reward each other for that. I was here in the beginning of the show when you introduced it and you said, yes, Shanita Hubbard, we're going to talk about the ride or die topic. It was like, woo! Yeah. Like, it's presented as... Because that's what we've been trained to think. That you get a crown for this. There's no crown for giving until you die. Right? There's no reward for that. So a lot of it is because... We're socially conditioned as women to believe we're supposed to give until there's nothing of us because that's what makes us a good mom. That's what makes us a great teacher. That's what makes us, you know, a great EP. Yeah. Like, great, our greatness is defined on how much we can give until we're void, until we're empty. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Bella, in your relationship, you were with... They said, said preach. The Tam Fam said preach. Um, you were in that relationship, the one that set you off yeah. in the video. Yeah. You finally walked away from that relationship. I did. Um, <laughs> you say you haven't looked back. Yeah. What was the breaking point? It was when I started to lose myself. I couldn't be a mother that I wanted to be. I couldn't be the woman I wanted to be. So losing myself, I had to really just understand, like, it's time to get it together. It's time for you to make a decision. Either you're gonna keep going through this with him and you're gonna keep fighting and keep dealing with the drama, or you're gonna find yourself and start to love yourself and know your worth. Mm. So I started self-loving. Yeah. And I've been fine ever since. Melanie, I know that you talk about how far you've come. You said, I overcame the toxic patterns that had been ruling my life. I stopped being a people pleaser and I got selfish as hell in the best way. Um, how do you get selfish in the best way? Because again, the nature of what we're trained, selfish is a bad thing. How did you get selfish as hell, as you put it, in the best way? I just started putting me first. Mm. Like my whole life was about putting everybody else first, to my detriment. And I was like, you know what? Life has to be about me now. Like I've given so much that I don't even recognize who I am. Mm. Like, who am I outside of my roles? Like, who is Melanie as the person, as the human? Not the mother, the wife, the daughter, you know, all the things. Mm -hmm. Like, who am I? And then I literally just started working on me like it was my job. Like it was your job. Speaking of that, Dakia, with your job, how do you, you know, how do you extract yourself from it? How did you say, okay, kindness is the rule? but I can't let it rule me. How did you do that? It was really hard. In fact, even when I was thinking of quitting my job, I was thinking how it will affect my students. Mm -hmm. Who's going to teach them? Who's going to be there for them? Eventually, again, like these other ladies said, I chose me. You I quit, quit your job? Place. I quit my job. Wow. I quit my job. And I felt like I was abandoning my kids. Right. So did you, did you quit because you couldn't find the balance? Was there just, were you too far in and the expectations were too large that the only solution was to extract yourself from the job? Yes, because I had given people uh, for so long, I'd let them cross boundaries, whether it be my coworkers, you know, require things of me or the students, they wouldn't respect my no. So I had to walk away. And when I walked away, it was scary. Um, that's kind of what led to what you mentioned earlier, the anxiety, the depression. I didn't know what to do. This was my passion. This is what I went to college for. Um, so I had to shift my entire life and wow. figure out how to continue to show up for my kids and my family and help provide. And so I actually studied entrepreneurship and started my own business. Wow. Still helping people.